tell me a little bit more about your role at UFT and how you came to teach there and what's your favorite part about that? The, the course that I'm teaching, I started two years ago and this fall would be the third year. So it was a total rebound of our old course that I have done it in my master program. It was very advanced statistic course with lots of crazy formula of statistics using SPSS is that the old fashioned mm -hmm. software and it's not practical for MHI or master of health informatics graduates. Mm -hmm. I have never used that skills in my job or any of other graduates. Several times a student's graduate gave feedback to the program director and finally Dr. Karim Kishafti, our recent program director, said that, okay, I know that you are working data science, so give me an offer what you can do, how you can rebound it. So I put together with one of my friends, the co-instructors, we started with the statistics in combination of SAS. So SAS is the most popular coding software in the government institute right now in Canada. And SAS stands for software server. Yes, sir. exactly. So it's not very advanced. It's a high level of statistics, just very routine skills they may need for any research in the project or research in the, any publication or something. And they start learning with SAS and then we they need to prepare data for their analysis. Mm -hmm. We are also touching some SQL, very advanced SQL coding. And mm -hmm. as you said, this is package for our statistic. We div uh, divided two packages, statistic, SAS, SQL, and then data science with understanding what is the basic of natural language processing, NLP. Yeah. We with this is the below sign synthetic EMR mm -hmm. data oh, okay. so, so they can the students should put very what? messy data okay. so they have to clean it wrangling data and prepare some inside because we don't want to very jump deep in the coding it's not very we just want to they learn some very basic, basic of coding yeah for this reason I'm teaching rapid minor it's a very advanced analytics software without any coding. It's just all visual. Oh my gosh. You like just, for example, nine? Sorry? Nine, the analytics. Uh, yeah, I hear so that's built. Yeah. It's a very, no coding again, and it's a very practical way of visualizing yeah. analytics. Rapid and that's what I learned one. when I did. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah? yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Rapid Miner is very advanced. Even you can design AI or deep learning wow. that one. Okay, so what's the level of knowledge that you have to have in order to be successful? Maybe not excel in the courses that you're teaching, but just be successful and finish and pass. And for those interested. We just prepare them. We just let them understand what's happening in these shelters because they are very fresh students for this master program. Okay. And all the time I am doing pre-course assessment. Okay, mm -hmm. what is the level of your knowledge about the statistics? or data science. I know that because I group them fairly in the group assignment. Oh, okay. I don't want to put all people in, with the high level of coding in the group. Oh. So I spread out in different groups. So, so you have to have some level of coding knowledge. Exactly. Yeah. Some, some of them level of statistics. Zero. Some have zero. Yes. And they can still be successful. Yeah, the because those assignments or all course materials support them a step by step move forward to learning more about that one. Okay. And if you are prepare them for the next level, it would be the other course, it would be about the AI. Mm -hmm. But they have to play with very basic of AI. Okay. This is another of course. So we are pre preparing them for that the other. And how long is that course? Two years. years. And it's for two different cohort. One from regular one. There are more people from bachelor they are coming yeah in the regular one and we have a practicum for them they will go in the second year for in some companies working and implement project design and implement 
also we have the other court is a executive court for yeah. some people that already they are working the system mm -hmm. they just want to own, own our yeah our school and hone their skills in this environment so they join us and instead of practicum they have to design and implement a project in their workplace oh got it so and so different. I'm assuming that the answer is many, but what would be the roles that someone completing this master's program would assume or would be able to look forward to? Yeah, this is that. In terms of actual titles. Uh, yeah. I'm supporting the program director, Dr. Shabji, in this way. We are doing some market research and do some evaluation. Okay, what's happening for all similar programs? In Canada, because we have the same master program in Dalhousie, McMaster, Waterloo, Victoria, and we saw that any of us, we are seeing this big package in different way. McMaster from business, Victoria more focus on health information. Victoria is Waterloo is very technical. We are all the engineers are there exactly. <laughs> We are seeing this one from leadership and policy making because our program is under IHPME, yeah. Institute of Health Policy and Management. Mm -hmm. So we are focusing in that environment and we are planning to improving the, the whole curriculum to train future leaders for digital health for oh, Canada. I might check it out yeah. myself.